I have just got to the airport, about to check in, and about to fly to the Guangzhou. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard China Southern Airlines. Your number is... Hi, well I've just arrived in China, Guangzhou, China, and um, it's my first time here, I'm alone, but it's okay. I'm gonna get a taxi and go to the hotel, uh, refresh and try and like get in contact with some people over there. Um, it's hard to get onto internet and stuff here, I need to get the VPN, I got that, but then the internet's not strong, so I'm gonna wait till I get to the hotel and uh, hopefully make contact with some people there. <laughs> I just got a taxi and I don't know if anyone's ever seen Quentin Tarantino's Jeff Proof where they put the girl inside the stuntman's car and um, it's, she's kind of trapped in like kind of a cage and then he starts doing all these crazy stunts and then, well, it doesn't end very well for her. Well, I'm kind of getting a little bit of a, not a feeling, but like, it reminds me of that look. Oh my God. I'm seriously trapped in here. Okay, so I've just got into my hotel. Let's put my bag there. I don't know. I don't really know. I'm confused. This is the bathroom there. Let's go through this way and then the sink there. And the shower. Take a meal. Too bright. Ouch. Yay. Mail on the line. 
portable TV right there. Okay, so now I'm going to give my own personal review on Glory Kickboxing Guangzhou. So I actually went to Glory Kickboxing in California about two to three years ago. And um, I feel like each host country that they do it in, they obviously they have to have local fighters from that country. So I guess you can't really compare that much, but then um, I would say from seeing the one in California, the standard there is a bit better than the standard of fighters that you would get in China for now. I mean, kickboxing and martial arts and Muay Thai is growing in China like crazy right now, so I imagine in the future that the fighters are going to get much, much better and um, much better well-rounded fighters as well with all different weapons, not just punches. And they're going to be able to use kicks a lot better and knees even. Anyway, so we get to the stadium. It's really nice actually, it's really big. Actually, quite similar to the one in California, that was a really big one too, so um, I don't think they hold out on the stadiums at all, unlike the cost of the events, because like, it's a big event, and it wasn't full, but um, there was a lot of people there, I would say, enough. Um, so the fights, um, for the fights we had two ties um, fighting on the cards, which I was excited about. Um, that was Pech Pinom Rong Kiet Mugao, and also Zaza Sari, a popular female fighter in Thailand. Anyway, so Pech Pinom Rong, he went first, and um, it, was it was a good fight, like he was doing really well. I, feel, I felt like the referee was picking on him a little bit, maybe because he's Thai and like, Every time they got caught into the clinch, you know, obviously in kickboxing you're not supposed to clinch, right? So um, maybe the referee was a bit too much on Pech Pinom Rong about that situation. It's easy to get caught into the clinch in any fights. So, um, and some of the other fights, uh, actually, he kind of let it go a little bit. He wasn't so much on like, like one particular fighter, but on Pech, he was just, just on his ass pretty much. That wasn't as fair. Anyway, Pech won and he fought awesome. After that was Zaza Sari. Um, she, she she's a great fighter. She's got such good technique. It's just beautiful technique. So she fought against a Chinese girl. In the first round, Zaza went to punch, and as she was bringing back her her punch, right, obviously her elbow gets stuck stuck out like this. The Chinese girl ran her forehead into her elbow, causing a cut around here. A, like a small cut, it wasn't even going into her eyes or anything. And then the um, the Chinese girl's corner was just going crazy, saying like, oh, she's Thai, she shouldn't be throwing elbows, she, she should get foul and everything like this. But um, anyway, so the people at Glory, they watched the replay over in slow motion like a lot of times. There was no foul, really. It was an accident, a complete accident. So that was classed as a no contest. Another big fight to mention is um, Bigfoot Silver and Rico Verhoeven. Um, these guys are huge. They're super heavyweight. Oh, yeah, is it? Heavyweight super fight. That's what it was. Um, basically, Bigfoot Silver, you may know him from fighting MMA. He's, get, he's getting on a little bit now. I mean, he's getting quite old, I would say. So, um, he, he definitely... You could definitely notice it in the ring, his age. Um, Rico's a lot much younger than him, he seems a bit stronger and a bit more experienced in kickboxing as well and more powerful and faster. Um, Bigfoot, he was quite slow, a little bit sloppy, he kept going for takedowns. Obviously it's not takedowns because it's not MMA, it's kickboxing. Um, anyway, he got knocked out, uh, Rico was doing spinning back kicks and um, didn't, yeah, it wasn't great for Silva. I would say it's time for Silver to uh, pack in the gloves, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, the last fight, the main event fight, that was Simon Marcus, who I am a fan of. Like I fought, actually fought on the same card of him um, many years ago. That was my fifth fight, and he was on the same card. It was outside Central World, so um, he's been my friend, and I've known him since that day. So I was definitely rooting for him. Anyway, he was fighting against this Brazilian guy named Alex Pereira, Pereira, something like that. Uh, anyway, yeah. So from the first round, just Simon just didn't seem himself. Like his usual self, he's very confident. He's a 
he's walking forward, he's, you know, he's sh shooting out all different weapons. Um, this time, he was backing up a little bit. Like I said, he, his face just didn't seem to have the confidence in it for this fight. The Brazilian, as Brazilians do, they're very passionate, so they're just fighting with all their heart, so the, Alex was doing very well. Um, then we started to notice maybe in the third or fourth round, because it was, it was a championship rap, championship fight, um, fighting for Simon's belt. So it was five rounds. Um, yeah, maybe the third or fourth, we saw that Marcus's foot was like swollen, like really big. It was like this big. So obviously he'd broken his foot, and we're thinking possibly in the first round he actually broke it. Um, so obviously his performance wasn't great, possibly due to that. But oh my god, res full respect for him though. Like he kept on fighting throughout the entire fight. Like he just he wouldn't give up. So much much respect. Overall, let me see. Like it was a short trip, but it was an, it was a, it was an interesting trip. I got to um, talk to a lot of people in the. Muay Thai business, or kickboxing business, fight business overall. Um, so people who I've seen in Thailand for a long time, and, know, and every time I see them, it's also a decat, and like, it's just a high and by, but you never really get to talk to them because like everything's just busy. Anyway, so it was nice to actually talk to these people, and like I get to know them, they get to know me, so it was a good trip. Uh, Glory was interesting. It's nice to compare to see how it is in different countries as well. Um, we still hold up the standard of the, like everything that they, they do. Um, even though I, I heard they had some difficulties in the beginning um, with the Chinese setup, but um, they pulled it through. It was, it was a good event. I'm yeah, very impressed. Anyway, that's it for now. Cap and car.